Boxing impressions is really important in removable prosthodontics because of the way that we use our casts. A boxed impression gives us a master cast that is much stronger. One of the reasons is that it's all one unit. Another is that we can make sure that the base is a certain thickness so that when we put it under hydraulic pressure, when we're processing our, our, our prostheses, it doesn't fracture under the hydraulic pressure. The other reason that strength is important is that when you're mounting your casts, if you have to remount them and your base isn't very thick, or if it's in a couple of pieces and you're trying to remove that from your articulator, you may find that the cast breaks if the base is not thick enough or if it's not all one piece. The other reason that boxing impressions is so important in removable prosthodontics and not so much important in other areas is that we need a peripheral roll to get the seal as well as we can so that we've got a good retentive prosthesis. When we spend a lot of time doing our border moldering and capturing that peripheral roll, it's important that when we pour up our cast that we capture all of that roll. And by boxing the impression, getting a land area and making sure that we have incorporated all of that peripheral roll, we make sure that our prosthesis has better retention. The last aspect that's really important for uh, master cast and removal of prosthodontics is to have a nice smooth land area and also a very smooth tongue space. When we go to process acrylic resin on these, we're going to put some investment tight against this. We're going to pour plaster against the surface. If it's rough and sharp and has lots of undercuts like this cast is here, when we try and separate those two parts of our flask when we're doing the processing, this cast will fracture. That's not going to work very well. We're going to have a broken cast and not be able to process what we want. Here we are separating the two parts of the flask and showing how the processing takes place. Really important, as you can see, that the two parts of the flask separate easily. Start by measuring out five to six scoops of alginate powder. It's not a real science. The amount of alginate you need will depend on the size of your impression. Normally when you mix alginate for an impression you want to mix it accurately. For boxing an impression it's not that critical. So we want to mix it up so you've got enough moisture to make it a little bit thicker than normal. You don't want it runny like an impression uh, and you don't want it too dry. You want every, all of the particles wet but you want a fairly stiff mix. Take your thick mix, put it in the denture cup, smooth it down and even it out as best you can. Sometimes a wet finger is helpful. Take your impression, place it into the alginate and push it down till the borders come up so they're just about three, two to three millimeters below the peripheral roll. Try and be as neat as possible so there's less trimming to do when you're finished. And again, place the mandibular impression in. Try and make sure that the borders aren't too close to the cup edges so that you've got a bit of a periphery all the way around. And you want to make sure that you don't bury the retromolar pads. If you do it this step, you're making sure later when you trim the alginate that you expose those all again. As we said, if you use a wet finger, you can smooth out that surface so it's nice and smooth and you don't have to do trimming of the cast after you pour it in the stone. Now we're going to show how to trim the maxillary. First you take your spatula, just slide it around the periphery. Uh, that'll help release it from the cup and you can take the whole thing right out and trim any excess that you might have got that's either too close to the peripheral roll or is not even the way you want the land area to be on your final cast. Make sure to use a finger rest while you're using your uh, scalpel blade so you don't slip and cut yourself. Make sure you don't cut underneath and create an undercut where the alginate meets the impression. You want it tight against the, the roll and you want to see that last two to three millimeters of the roll on the peripheral edge of the impression. You want to make sure that both your hamular notches in the maxilla and the retromolar pads in the mandible are exposed.
you'd like the posterior edge of the impression to be slightly raised just above the alginate so that when your cast is poured you can see the true end of the impression which should be at your posterior paddle seal if you mark that and trimmed your impression back to that part that's where your, your uh, cast and your denture should end you can slip that back into the, the um, denture cup and that's ready to pour some stone in. For trimming the mandibular one, we'll release it from the cup, the same as we did in the maxilla. Again, make sure you have two to three millimeters of the peripheral roll exposed. Try and make sure that the land area is as horizontal as possible. And make sure that you don't cut the alginate so that there's an undercut between the alginate and the, the impression. See how we're going very deep here to expose the retromolar pads. You don't want to have that buried. If you pour up your cast and you don't have the retromolar pads in there, you're going to end up having to remake your impression. So all the way around you should be able to see the peripheral roll of your impression. It's a good shot there showing how it's just raised just above the land area and the tongue space in the mandible. And we'll pop that back in to our denture cup for pouring. When you've repositioned your impression back in the cup, make sure that the highest part of the impression is at least 12 to 15 millimeters from the top of the cup. That'll make sure you have a base that's thick enough to resist fracture when you're processing and when you're mounting and, and remounting your cast on your articulator. For complete dentures, we use uh, microstone. We use it in the pre-measured packs. Um, it mixes with 40 mils of water. Um, it's sort of a cream color or a yellow color uh, here at the school, but it comes in many different colors. Uh, we don't use uh, type 4 stone. Microstone is a type 3 stone. It's a little bit softer. When we're processing the dentures, it's easy to, easier to break the cast out of the um, uh, processing flask or get the denture off of the, the master cast when we're finished processing than if we use the other types of stone. When you're boxing an impression and pouring it in the box, Sometimes you may find that you need to use two packages of the microstone. If you're using uh, two packs, you're measuring out uh, 80 uh, mils of water uh, into your vacuum mixer. You're going to stir that uh, till all of the powder is wet. Uh, make sure that uh, you don't have any dry powder left in the mix, but you don't have to sit there and mix it um, much past when everything's wet. Uh, then put your paddle into the mix Make sure when you're taking uh, your spatula out from the initial mix in the, in the uh, mixer um, not to get too much on the sides where it's going to suck up into the uh, intake of the vacuum. Place your paddle in there, take it over to the mixer. Place it on the mixer, put your hose in the vacuum. You should see the needle go up to around uh, 20 to 30 um, on the scale and you need to mix that for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds maximum. Start the vibrator and set it so that it's vibrating at a moderately high speed. Start to pour in one area of the cup and let the stone flow evenly to the other areas. When you've got your impression fully covered, then you can start to use the rest of the stone to fill up the cup right to the top. By doing that, you'll ensure 
that you have the adequate thickness of your cast when it's fully poured. 